Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video is about gynecological history taking and physical examination. We will learn about what are the steps that are included in gynecological history taking and physical examination. Also, what is the procedure? How can we prepare the patient for history taking and physical examination? And how can we perform the physical examination as a nurse? Let's get started. First of all, history taking. History taking is a detailed information collection about a patient that we need to diagnose a disease and treat a disease. In order to know what problems the patient is facing, what kind of problem, what severity of problem the patient is facing, we need a background of the patient. That background is history. In that background, we need to include every possible information that we can use, first of all, to diagnose the disease, and then to treat that disease. After history, then we can proceed towards physical examination. Whatever information we have obtained in words, in term of words, we need to find that out in the patient's body. So, history taking according to gynecology should be very detailed, should contain every information regarding the woman's age, partner's age, woman's uh, number of children, obstetric history, menstrual history, menopausal history, family planning history, everything. We will discuss about everything here. First thing is setting of history taking. The setting of history taking should be peaceful, calm and comfortable for the patient. Because in gynecological history, patient and the partner, either patient alone or with the partner, shares very, very intimate personal information with the nurse. So, in order to maintain privacy, also to comfort the patient, we need to provide a relaxed environment, relaxed setting, so that patient can easily express her problems or concerns and also express her choice of treatment. A specific gynecological history includes biodemographic data, chief complaint, history of present illness, menstrual history, in that menstrual history, there is age at menarche. Menarche is the first menstrual period, last menstrual period, menstrual pattern, that is cycle, length, flow, associated pain. If there is any pain regularly occurring with menstruation, menstrual bleeding, these are the things that we need to include. In perimenopause and menopause, if the woman is above 45 years, then we can obtain this history. So there is bleeding pattern in late reproductive year. Is it regular or irregular? Are there any symptoms like vasomotor symptoms, hot flushes, irritation, night sweating? Is there any hormonal replacement therapy that patient is undergoing? Or if the patient has already faced menopause, what was the age of menopause that we need to collect? After that, obstetric history, number of pregnancies and number of their outcomes. Describe each pregnancy and its outcome in obstetric history. Also, describe maternal or neonatal complications if there was any complication. After that, there is medical history. Medical history is all about disease and medicine. Whatever disease the patient is suffering from, since how many years, and what are the medications that she is taking for that disease. If she had taken, if she has, she has left taking the medicine, for how long did she take? Six months? one year, two year, five year, how long did she continuously take some medicine? Because sometimes side effect, adverse effect of medicine is seen in body later. Also, if the mother has suffered from any kind of infectious disease, sexually transmitted disease, pelvic inflammatory disease previously, if the mother has allergy to some drug, if she had done blood transfusion, that is the history of anemia, that also should be obtained. Also, there is past surgical history. Surgical history is all about surgery and anesthesia. What was the type of surgery? Was it minor, major? What kind of anesthesia was used? Was there any bleeding? Was there any complication after the surgery? All that information. After that, family. Family history is about how many members were there in the family. We need a three-generation information. So, how many members were there in the family? 
did they have any disease which is related to our disease right now that information should be collected as we are concerned about gynecology we mainly need to know what the women have suffered from in our family before her were they healthy were they sound or did they suffer from any kind of disease after that there is personal history in personal history we need to know everything about our personal life about our occupation about our marital status if married for how long if not married if divorced for how long if widowed for how long also sexual history should be taken that includes sexual dysfunction dysparunia history of sexual abuse assault if yes for how long or for how long it lasted if it is about many years ago next is contraceptive history this is also important the choice of family planning method is very important in gynecological history because use of family planning leaves its impact on the reproductive health of the woman as we are concerned about gynecological health right now so contraceptive history is important next step is physical examination after obtaining complete history we need to perform physical examination here the steps are general and systemic examination system wise and then gynecological gynecological examination contains breast examination abdominal examination and pelvic examination pelvic examination is a little bit complex we need to maintain position we need to maintain everything breast examination can be easier because it can be done by self or can be done by health personnel abdominal examination should also be done by health personnel before performing physical examination make sure that patient has an empty bladder and make sure that you place the patient in a comfortable position if the patient is feeling uneasy you will have difficulty in the procedure of examination so first of all in general and systemic examination we don't need to write so much detail in exam as we are concerned about the gynecological examination more but there are some important points that we should not miss like examination of built if the patient is too thin or too obese examination of nutrition if the patient is underweight overweight pallor and jaundice pallor can be a sign of anemia and jaundice yellowish discoloration of conjunctiva can be a sign of jaundice teeth and gums does the patient have gingivitis gum bleeding that can be due to hormonal reasons also palpation of thyroid gland many of the reproductive dysfunction might have a root in the thyroid side that means thyroid hormone is more than normal or less than normal can have an impact on reproductive health so thyroid examination is also necessary next is edema edema in extremities is a sign of dysfunction of cardiovascular system and renal system so that also should be examined else than that everything is as per the general systemic examination inside gynecological examination there is breast examination in first breast examination can be done routinely any a, any woman who is in reproductive age can do this breast self examination or if the age is above 30 they can do it in regular basis this self examination or examination done by health personnel can help to detect changes in the breast easily there are some steps of breast self examination if it is done by health personnel they will do it step wise but if it is done by self then there are some steps that patient needs to follow basically the steps of inf inspection and palpation done by anyone is same first of all inspection with arm at side arm should be kept at side for examination and then arm can be raised above the head for next step arm again can be kept at the wrist for next step waist sorry waist for next step and next would be palpation of the breast including the axillary side axillary nodes
Next step is abdominal examination. The abdominal organs are highly influenced by reproductive hormones. When there is pregnancy, the whole abdominal organs are pushed ahead because of the gravid uterus. And when there is menstruation or menopause, the whole GI tract and all the abdominal organs suffer because of the changes in hormonal level. Abdominal examination can be done by inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. You cannot perform percussion if the woman is pregnant, but else than that you can perform percussion. On inspection, we can see skin condition, presence of surgical scar, prominent pain. On palpation, we can examine rigidity of abdominal muscle, location of pelvic mass and organomegaly. On, percuss on percussion, we can find out if there is any pelvic tumor or tumor at any other part of the body by listening to the sound. In auscultation, we can find out hyperactive or hypoactive bowel sound. We can also find out intestinal obstruction by performing auscultation. Organomegaly, enlargement of organ. In pelvic examination, there is inspection of external organs and inspection of internal organs. Inspection of external organs, external genitalia, is inspecting it from outer side. And inspection of internal organs can be done by manual or bimanual examination. Manual examination is simply digital examination, examination by digits fingers, and by manual, two hands. Same, using again using digits, but using both the hands during examination. Also, rectal vaginal examination can be performed. Rectal vaginal examination helps to find out deformities in the rectum as well as vagina. To prepare the patient for gynecological examination, first of all, we need to make sure that bowel and bladder both of the patient is empty. If any of the female family member can remain by the patient's side, then patient can feel easy, comfort. If the patient is unmarried or if the patient is minor, underage, then presence of mother, especially, is necessary. Presence of a parent or a guardian is necessary. If female, then better. A light source should be maintained so that organs can be seen, internal reproductive organs can be seen clearly. There should be use of sterile gloves, sterile lubricant, speculum and swab. If anything you need to extract from the inside, then swab is also required. Next is position of the patient. Position should be in such a way that your whole physical examination can go through. First of all, for abdominal examination, for back examination, we can assume lateral position, sinks position. And for vaginal examination, rectal examination or pelvic examination simply. Dorsal recumbent position can be assumed. Also, lithotomy position can be assumed. This is a lithotomy position. In lithotomy position, there is a use of a stirrup in which the part below the knee is adjusted. This way, all the pelvic organs can be accessible to the health personnel, to the nurse who is examining. This is seems dorsal recumbent, sorry, dorsal recumbent position. In dorsal recumbent position, this is this looks like similar to lithotomy position, but it is not exactly similar. There is no stirrup. Patient just raises the knees and makes it easier for the nurse to examine pelvic organs. Thank you so much. If there is any doubt, it can be dropped in the comment box.